Welcome to Cavalry Conversations. <laughs> but really. Welcome to Cavalry Conversations. My name is Mariah, and I'm here with my big brother and some other people that we will introduce in a bit. <laughs> my big brother, Pastor Morgan. Here I am. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> and we are now going to introduce our special guests. So here they are, Ryan and Andrea. Woo! Woo! Thank you guys Howdy. for joining us. Thanks. We are happy to have you in our Calvary Conversation Studio oh, mm -hmm. that Happy Drea just found out about. <laughs> that it was this room? <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, but so we're going to have Morgan pray for us before we get into your guys' special introductions. Mm. But Morgan, would you like to pray for us? Yeah, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for this time. Thank you for this opportunity to, um, I thank you that it's not just me and Mariah. <laughs> <laughs> I get tired of that. I'm just kidding. Yeah. But thank you, Lord, that we get to um, talk and converse with Ryan and Andrea. And I just pray, Lord, that you would lead this conversation, that you would, uh, just like I prayed earlier, that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit. We need your Holy Spirit in everything that we do. So God, I pray that you would uh, show us what you want us to talk about, the topics that you want us to cover, and uh, I pray that it would be beneficial for your people, even if it's just to see people um, talking about things of you and to see uh, the younger generation rising up. And I pray, God, that uh, you would help us to love one another well and that you'll help us to stand and not to be cowards any longer, God. And so I just thank you for this time, and I pray for a blessing upon it. It's in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I think I had like a little fly when I grabbed by my nose. I was like, what in the world? <laughs> <laughs> Someone play that's, a joke on me? That's an excuse for picking your nose. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just be honest. Morgan. I didn't touch my nose. We're all friends it. here. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> all right. So we are going to start with ladies first. Let's do this. We save the, I was about to say save the best for last as I was saying to you, but I guess Ryan's awesome. But okay. Drea, can you just tell the people who you are? And we're going to talk about Turning Point Faith, too. That's another thing. And what you do with Turning Point Faith and also how you came to Calvary. Okay. Well, my name is Andrea, like you said. Um, I guess I guess I'll start with how I came to Calvary, if mm -hmm. that makes sense first. Okay, so I came to Calvary. I was actually going to Victory Worship Center first. It's now called Zion City. Um, but I was going there first, and then I felt just like the Lord was kind of drawing me away from that church and it kind of was putting in my heart um like community you mm -hmm. know and like and like like the desire to fellowship because like you know the bible says iron sharpens, sharpens iron right yeah. mm -hmm. and i felt like i wasn't really getting that at victory and so i feel like um i just started praying about it and this is actually one of the coolest things like experiences ever from the lord i was trying to sleep usually when my head hits the pillow like my head on the pillow i'm out mm -hmm. <laughs> but i couldn't sleep i literally couldn't sleep so i was like okay god like what do you have to t like to tell me what do you want to talk about so um, I just laid there and I listened, and while I was um, just laying there, I got just I got the, an impression of like two of two words, and one was it doesn't really matter right now, but um, one was another was one word, and then the other mm -hmm. one um, was literally like almost like a like a push to go to, to go to Calvary, mm -hmm. and I'd already visited a couple times, right? Um, but I was one foot in, one foot out, like for certain reasons, suck at victory, um, and so I was like, you know what, like Lord, you're saying to go, so I'll go, and so I came and. Literally, I was praying for a church, not only for fellowship and for, like, community and family and, like, iron sharpening iron, mm -hmm. you know, but also uh, a church that taught, like, directly out of the Bible. I didn't want so much, like, topical anymore. I wanted to learn what the word says because in the end times, like, I don't need to know topics. I need to know what God mm -hmm. says, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I sat and listened to Pastor Craig and, like, going verse by verse. I've never had, like, the fire to, like, learn scripture like mm. i do now like coming here so honestly mm. i know this was literally there's no way it wasn't the lord telling me to come here so mm. Mm -hmm. that's that um what was the other thing you asked turning, me? Point, turning faith. point faith okay i'm the secretary of turning <laughs> point faith um oh, yeah. and so i basically take a lot of notes mm -hmm. but um and we, we just started obviously but um yeah um where's your notebook 
<laughs> I'm, I, I, I'm yeah, joking. There you go. She's tacky. Um, yeah, no. Uh, I'm the secretary, and um, what did you want to know about it? Like, what do you want me to te- like? Just why are you excited to be part of it? Oh, okay. Does okay. your hand get tired when you write a lot? Oh, tell them how you, you <laughs> went to the vet with me. Yeah, she's like my personal bodyguard, yeah. right? Yeah, <laughs> she got the muscles. <laughs> yeah. Like, Boom. Um, no, but uh, no. So yeah, we went to an event, an event, and um, it was a, it was a obviously it's political. Like t- turning point is a political like yeah. thing. With and um, Lake. yeah so we went um to the event but ours is turning point faith so we're not more the politics part we're more of the faith part mm-hmm. but politics are still a huge part of mm-hmm. faith mm-hmm. it's just not you know mm-hmm. our top mm-hmm. priority yeah. yeah um so uh yeah I'm, my I'm job happy. is to help yeah and i'm excited i'm so excited yep. yeah all right mr ryan i was about to say rye but i'm like <laughs> <laughs> that's my nickname you can take it yeah <laughs> <laughs> My name's Ryan uh, Riley. I came to this church probably first time like last November mm-hmm. and started coming more consistently in January. And I think I first came because I felt like the Lord was was <clears throat> convicting me and encouraging me to go, n- go with a group of people mm-hmm. who were putting him first mm-hmm. uh, with a, yeah, people who were serious about following the lord and loving him and with all their heart mind soul and strength mm-hmm. so and you knew morgan and i yeah i went to high school with mm-hmm. morgan and uh, you knew mariah what are you talking about this? <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah. he was in my grade that's what yeah. you meant mm-hmm. yeah yeah and then after high school we had like a uh, we didn't really talk that much for mm-hmm. Until came back here, basically. We came yeah. went to Morgan's really wedding, though. Yeah. yeah. That was pretty lit. <laughs> so. Two years ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, so I'm the treasurer. Ryan's like, what am I doing? <laughs> 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 Sorry. We're going to make fun of Ryan a lot because he missed our first chapter meeting. Mm. <laughs> oh, Ryan, I'm mm. sorry. <laughs> that I did. But <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm the treasurer. <clears throat> and mm. I think it's important to to it was important to me because like faith affects every part of your life Mm -hmm. like when when you are no longer your own yeah and Mm -hmm. you're called to speak the truth and love and like pastor craig and morgan talk about be a watchman Mm -hmm. it uh it goes into every area and Mm -hmm. and uh, politics is part of that And then you look at, you get encouraged by other people of faith who are stepping up and serving in politics. Like an example in my mind is Madison Cawthorn, Mm -hmm. who's the Mm -hmm. 20-something-year-old youngest congressman, I believe. In a wheelchair. In a wheelchair, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's just, you know, a ball (laughs) of fire. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) But from what I've heard, he's he, you know, believes in the Lord. And Mm -hmm. um, the other thing would be, I remember hearing that the the people who uh, wrote the Declaration of Independence are founding fathers, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. even though they all wore big white wigs. <laughs> <laughs> they uh, they were in their twenties and thirties. They kind of looked mm-hmm. like you. So <laughs> yeah, they kind of looked like me. <laughs> wow. No, but <coughs> so uh, it's like I think Paul is talking to Timothy. It's not like. <sighs> That just not to feel like we're too young, but just yeah. to mm-hmm. take the calling and Amen. and run with it while yeah. mm-hmm. with, with what's in, he puts in front of us. Yep. Yeah. First Timothy four twelve. Yeah, just lead by example. Right. Right. Down at you because you're young. Yeah. Oh, that an example too. in faith. Wait, in speech, in life, in faith. Yeah, and in purity. There you go. Yep. Good. But I'm just thankful for you guys because you guys are also a big help like at our church and mm. always serving. Yeah. Andrea runs the coffee bar. Cal- <laughs> That's a Calvary conversation. <laughs> Galatians give thanks 6, a latte. 14. No, give thanks a latte. So I used to do that. And then I was getting overwhelmed with a lot of like different events and things we have coming up in the podcast. Mm. And so you used to work at Starbucks, that liberal place. I mean. And then, <laughs> and then you left. And um, uh. so now you are... Yep. Working and running the coffee bar, which is open, both services, 9 a.m. and 11 a.m., before and after. Come join mm-hmm. us. And on Wednesday after service. But you do that and work with the kids and do 
the cameras or words both 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 Both. Mm -hmm. you're amazing and with our youth group and then ryan does the sound he does youth group um did you start off doing anything else like ushers no um i do you guys kids do yeah yeah kids. once a month or so mm-hmm. so he does whatever he needs yeah. to do. right definitely oh, learn he cleans a lot with the little ones between services <laughs> yep and yeah. they both clean and help me so yeah it's just cool to have young adults who aren't just coming to be blessed but to serve others and to be a blessing and mm-hmm. so Morgan and I have both seen that in you guys, and that's why you guys are sitting here today oh. and on our Turning Point Faith team. Oh, yeah. So, Morgan, did you have any questions for this? TPT. <laughs> Turning Point. What is that? Oh. I missed no. the F. TP. Oh, man. I was thinking. TPF. <laughs> TBD. <laughs> Tucson. <laughs> to be determined. Oh, I thought you were saying CBD in my mind. I'm like, Morgan, we are not promoting that. I almost said Tucson no. Federal Credit Union, and that's not even the same. But look at these socks. Wow. Mustache. Oh. Uh, so what did you want? What did you ask me? She was, asked, she was saying you mustache ask a, qu- a question. Mustache? Mm. Morgan does have a good mustache. <laughs> no, not we're, really. We're getting off a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, but she was saying if you have any questions yeah. for us. Yeah. Ah, any questions for you guys. So... Sometimes people, that's a big question. A lot. Well, that's a question and a big concern for people. They're like, oh, churches should not get involved in politics mm-hmm. or anything like that at all. And I've been tempted, not not so much with that. I just don't like to watch the news and stuff, so mm-hmm. I don't like to, I like to keep it out of my mind. But why is it so important for us to speak up and stand up as a church? And how much do you think we should get involved in that? So, who wants it? Sure. Well, first of all, seek first the kingdom of heaven and his kingdom, his kingdom and his righteousness Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. uh, walk by the spirit. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I think for me, at least my experience is like, obviously, just your relationship with God is the top. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, But in my experience in doing that, he calls us to the world keeps on getting darker and darker Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's not loving to not say anything particularly to like a broken and lost world especially when we serve a god who has a heart for restoration Mm -hmm. and it's a really big heart and (laughs) it wants to you know he he uh desires that all might come to the knowledge of him Mm -hmm. and to serve him Mm -hmm. and uh we are we're in a in a in a war Mm-hmm. both you know in our own personal lives but also it 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 goes so much bigger than that yeah and so i mean i don't think i think paul that's, that's a separate thing but paul is being mm-hmm. literal when he says you know put on the full armor of god mm-hmm. so i think in it getting involved in politics is is an, an element of that or like speaking up and going to school board meetings or wherever the, the spirit mm-hmm. leads you at yeah. through like yeah. the armor tells you that you're going to be in a battle you're yeah. going to be in a yeah. fight yeah and we always say there's no armor on the back so it's not like we're supposed to run and right. retreat right That's and we're not supposed to be hiding mm-hmm. you know we're not supposed to just be in our homes in our ar- armor but we have to step up and stand so yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and i think that we've gotten complacent because things have been kind of good especially with our last president mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. um so we kind of are like hey i don't really need to stand for much you know it, things are okay but now we're like oh man we we need to stand and we need yeah. to speak because it's like how did it get this bad yeah so yeah what would pastor you say craig um pastor craig said I, I, gotta, I don't want to butcher it, but he said something like everything kind of went down on our watch. Yeah. Like, like mm-hmm. as Christians, we're not supposed to just be chilling when it's mm-hmm. easy. We're supposed to, that's even, even a better time to be praying. Mm-hmm. I mean, to be mm-hmm. to like, to like battle, you know, for, yeah. mm-hmm. for everything, for like for just the Lord's kingdom to come down, you know? Mm-hmm. But, um, I was thinking about, um, how religion and politics are like the most taboo, like subjects everywhere you go, like work and every, like school, everything is always mm. don't talk about religion and politics. Yeah. But it's so cool because like it's cool and like nerve wracking at the same time that God doesn't call us to fall back. Right. He calls us to, to like you said, charge forward. We don't run back. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I was reading, I think it was I think it's Second Timothy three. 
it says like it says all those who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted and it's just another one mm -hmm. of a scripture that says we will be persecuted you know yeah. what I mean it's, it's gonna happen and I feel like what more of an area than in politics yeah. you know like the government it runs a lot of things you know and and so we obviously want what the Lord says to be be evident in our laws and in everything that's happening you know what I mean mm -hmm. so so mm. yeah as as Christians I feel like I feel like people can often think that we have a one track mind and I mean we kind of do but <laughs> but like a one track mind as in like it's only about abortion and in like the the big couple of things we think about you know but when you think about just the laws in the Bible and just how the Lord yep. planned mm. things to be in the first place if if that if if what he had established in the beginning was still here we wouldn't be in this situation you know mm. so I think it's just so like yeah I think Christians should definitely be, be involved more in politics than we really are, you yeah. know? And if we're not going to be stepping up and doing things or going out and talking to people about things or anything like that, then all the more be in our closet praying, you know what yeah. I mean? So, mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I think that is good for all of us to realize that we all have different roles, right? Not everyone's going to be part of like turning point faith or doing that stuff. Mm -hmm. But right. like you said, how important it is to be praying and to be yeah. voting and to not be a coward. Like when you see something happen and like it says in Ezekiel 33, if you see the enemy coming, and you don't warn the people, their yeah. blood will be on your head. So as Christians, as Christ followers, not just for certain people, like we all need to warn if we see something happening, mm -hmm. right? If we see the what's happening in the schools with um, the transgender and yeah. all this stuff, we need to be able to say, this is not the way God intended it for a reason, not because God's mean, right? Not because God just doesn't want us to have fun. He puts these things and how it's just with marriages between a man and a woman, right? Mm -hmm. Not the other way around because when you see the statistics of even the kids who are so young, you know, having sex changes, yeah. you oh see the gosh, suicide yeah. rate go up you see like all these very, very dark things. And it's just, we need to be able to not worry about also offending people right. because their lives are literally at stake in their souls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really cool for us as young adults because I mean, Morgan's married, right? But especially when we're young adults who aren't married, we have a lot of time. Mm. Yeah. Like even you, cause you don't have kids yet. Like we have time. Mm -hmm. And so it's cool that we, that's why with Turning Point, they have young adults doing this stuff with turning point because they say in every big revolution or things it was the what is it it's from 18 to 30 are mm -hmm. the people who are yeah. doing this stuff mm -hmm. because they're so passionate and on fire but now we see our culture on fire and excited for wrong the things wrong for reason, yeah. lust for um i don't know just their liberal mindset of the fact of like let's support um like when they do like same sex marriage or like we need to like all oh, be doing drugs and things like that instead of no all of that is against what the bible says and god's giving us these rules because he loves and he's protecting us from pain and sin because um, it leads to death but my question to you in saying all that is why why do you think it also is very important for young adults in church to be serving and like why my question to you i guess is very simple why do you serve at church mm -hmm. why do you feel like why don't you just come to church and you know find a spouse and come from get it. married <laughs> come get a mate why, why drea why um, you come to church to be honest i can't explain why i like to serve in my own strength because honestly like when you think about it from a worldly perspective it doesn't make sense why do you want to just work for people like work for people not or get go, paid no nah, right right what's, what's we don't that? pay you to no the I'm, I'm, it's free it's free <laughs> um but uh i honestly as cliche as it sounds it's the lord like i yeah. i in my own strength don't i used, okay my saying in the past used to be i hate people like i used to always <laughs> say i hate people i can't stand people that was always <laughs> coming out of my mouth um but so seeing like where I am now, like the drastic change, there's no way I could have done it myself. So when it comes to just mm. like, I honestly, I truly just enjoy it. It's fun to me like mm. to go, to go, it doesn't make sense to fix, like, fix chairs or like mm. put things in the backs of chairs, sweep them up, mm. especially with music on, like some gospel music <laughs> and it's blasted. I love it, you know? <laughs> so yeah, I serve because not only because I just enjoy it because the grace and strength of God, but because I'm doing it for the Lord. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I'm not doing it for people. And yeah. it is nice to see people feel good about it. You know, it's nice to see people happy that you're helping them. 
but it's for the Lord, like the Bible says, to do all things is unto him, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. and it's mm-hmm. so it's it's even more like not only am I storing up treasures in heaven, yeah. mm-hmm. but also it's just it makes me like my heart honestly, this makes my I just kiss this mic, oops. <laughs> um, <laughs> it makes my heart happy to know that I'm making him happy. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like I just wanna like yeah. ball my eyes out because it just it's just so great. So mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. What about you, Ryan? Hey man. Oh, that was a great answer. <laughs> <laughs> you can't beat that. Oh. But I think the other element aside from what she said for me is that the son of man came not to yeah. be served, but to serve. Mm-hmm. And I think it's I Matthew think s- 20, 28. Matthew twenty twenty eight. There Give you go. Give his life as a ransom. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, he's the author and perfecter of our perfect. faith. He's mm-hmm. our, our lover, our husband, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, yeah. uh, and as as the church but yeah i think that's my answer that's good no i i just i think it's just exciting and cool that we have such like a close young adults group where most young adults groups that i've seen or like throughout our church and rotate it's constantly like if we're not doing something fun oh they're out they're out yeah but the cool thing with us is when we have the most fun like you were saying drea is when we're cleaning and stuff and we play music Mm -hmm. and we're laughing and we're joking you know what i mean like after youth group and it's cool because how my dad always wanted to so this is what we do as calvary um the young adults their job and their thing is to be serving the youth group kids and to be running youth group and to be sharing hey i used to do this like don't do what i did or follow me now as i follow christ and Mm. i think that we live in a generation like i was kind of talking about because all of us are like right we're yeah we're all under 30 right 27 Mm -hmm. 26 25 24 all those ages and i think it's just important for us to realize that yes the world's telling us this is the time to experience life you know like to have fun to travel to do all these things not saying we can't do that right um but we're not living for that right right? our our goal in life is to like you're even saying dre is to store up our treasures in heaven where moth and rust will not destroy it and also the only thing that's gonna last is our relationship with god like when we're coming to church right it's not um just a time to be seen but we're also getting right with god we should be doing that throughout the week but it's a really time like to be in the presence of god and with other believers but it's also to be able to help others know God and like to be able to direct others to him. Cause that's the mm-hmm. only thing that's going to matter is our relationship with God or right. relationship with others. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think it's really cool with our young adults. So what we do is the young adults serve at the youth group. So both of you guys are leaders at the youth group, but also we're usually the ones who are setting up before events, mm-hmm. tearing down. Um, yeah. The ones who are helping between services mm-hmm. throughout services. And I just think that's so cool because yeah. We also, we have the muscles for it, especially you guys. You guys are probably <laughs> <laughs> the buffest young adults well, we have. It makes me but. think of the, this verse. That's why I was silent. I was looking for this verse. It's Luke 17. Mm-hmm. Um, in verse 7, it says, Will any of you who has a servant plowing or keeping sheep say to him when he has come in from the field, come at once and recline at, at table? That's weird. At, at table. <laughs> at table. <laughs> Uh, will he not rather say to him, prepare supper for me and dress properly and serve me while I eat and mm. drink? And afterward, you will eat and drink. Um, mm. Does he thank the servant because he did what was commanded? Mm. And then verse 10 says, so you also, when you have done all that you were commanded, say we are unworthy servants. We have only done what was our duty. Mm. Yeah, And Gosh. that's all of us at, at mm. church. You know, it's yeah. not like... We have young adults so that we can have servants, but it's it's unto the master, which is Jesus. The master is not a pastor or the master is not Mariah. The master is not someone over you. Yeah, they're a master in a sense, but ultimately the master is God. And yeah, yeah, and as unto the Lord, that's what we always say, right? Mm -hmm. You see that in Ephesians with uh, husbands and wives. You see that with servants and masters. We have to do everything as unto him and it's it's wild because we if you think about yourself if i think about myself i'm so selfish mm-hmm. and i want everything my way no. but when i think <laughs> i'm an unworthy servant you know i i just 
need to do what the master has asked me yeah it really it really humbles you and puts you in your place yeah and and god will reward you for it and that's even a blessing that yeah. we don't deserve so mm-hmm. i was thinking yeah. about um mm. when you think about the world now and thinking about just even like, like let's think about young adults specifically mm-hmm. right in the world of where like where we are when we think about ourselves like the our, the world we live in now literally shows us what happens when we think about ourselves we have babies getting murdered in the womb because we're because we have women yeah. and i'm not we, women thinking about themselves and i'm not trying to like put a jab at anybody but i'm just like we got to think about yeah. so jesus came to serve and not be served right hmm. and we see like in the church and acts like what what it looked like when people yeah. did what they're supposed to do and we shared and we you know, loved each other. We gave, you know, we did all that like we're supposed to. Like you see how mm-hmm. that looked. And like mm-hmm. nowadays, like we said, we got people doing things for themselves. We have things, we have people thinking what they're doing is not affecting anyone else. Mm-hmm. And yet they're not thinking about how it's affecting anyone else. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, they're just thinking, oh, well, I need this for myself, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we can, you can just see the destruction in the world when we don't have what Jesus did in mind, you know? Yeah, yeah. that's good. That servant leadership we need too. Yeah. Because we still need leaders in the world. You know, God is our ultimate master, but we still need to be leaders. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But needs to come out of a heart of mm-hmm. service where you're showing people what to do because you're doing it yourself. Right. You're not just commanding people. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I like yeah. that. We're going to give this question to Ryan specifically. Mm-hmm. So oh, what yeah. is your favorite part of youth group and serving with the youth kids? And what do you mm-hmm. think maybe mm-hmm. even your, not mission, but like, why do you go to youth group, Ryan, to mm. be with the kids? Youth group? What do you like about youth group? Mm. I would say, hmm. I thought the Lord has been putting a couple of kids, like, really strongly on my heart. Mm. And I just love to see them doing sword drills, which, if you don't know, sword drill is, like, where <laughs> we call out a verse and then they stand up. Mm-hmm. Or they just, like, try to get to the verse real quick in their Bibles because, you know, we hand out Bibles. So to see them drawing near to the Lord mm. and th- there's, like, a question box so they put in questions. And mm-hmm. these questions that these kids yeah. are dealing yeah. with are, like, like questions that adults deal with. <laughs> yeah. And, there's, and they're, like, these kids are just so vulnerable. And then they, uh, out of the mouth of babes, like, these answers that they yeah, give are so yeah. profound Mm-hmm. So we're, it's just uh, an opportunity to be there with a little bit more experience in life, a little bit more of an experience with the Lord and come alongside them mm-hmm. and be like, this is yeah. what happened with me, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, encourage them to walk with the Lord. Yeah. yeah. And making disciples. Cause that's yeah. what yeah. you're saying. Like when you, you're the Lord lays in your heart to minister to certain kids is like to be able to, whether that's you take them out to lunch or you hang out mm-hmm. with them or just after youth group, you talk with them. Mm-hmm. and it's making a disciple what jesus did right follow yeah. me as i follow christ we need to be able to do that because that's what we're all commanded to do right as yeah. christians mm-hmm. matthew twenty eight nineteen, to go therefore and make disciples baptizing them in the name of the father son and the holy spirit teaching you to obey mm-hmm. right that's part of i always get but teaching them to obey all that i've commanded you or is it's that the word mm-hmm. yeah. matthew what five sixteen twenty maybe that's yeah maybe no, i no, combine no, no. two verses no, twenty eight nineteen. I, I just wanted, it's oh, the bible. but that's it's the bible right <laughs> but that's um our mission statement for mm-hmm. the church and should be for every christian and so when we go to youth group right we have a lot of fun with the kids right we play games yeah. Um, Tava's mom Maria makes, makes this amazing food. food and so you have <laughs> dinner and then we're able to do worship together and we have yeah. so much fun you know and then when we get to the time of reading the Bible we're like training the kids yeah. to say hey we always have them have their paper Bibles to show right because when you're on your phone you can be easily distracted as young adults mm-hmm. especially yeah we know that uh, right. we know that <laughs> yeah. but having your paper Bible and realizing that the word is God. Like he is speaking to us because kids always are like, one of the questions is how do you know if God's speaking to you? Such a good question. Through the word. Or some other questions kids have asked is like, what about if I'm dealing with people in the school who are like homosexuals or can I date in high school? Like these type of questions, which, but what answers it? Not our opinion, right? Not second opinions, but (laughs) it's in the Bible. Like when Morgan just read Romans one and we're all just like, oh my goodness. Mm. That was mm. answered that it was perfectly, so it but was it was so him. It was, well, it was Allie, but it's just perfectly mm, yeah. reading the word of God. And it has so much power. Mm. Right. And I think that 
just bringing it back to that we don't need any fun topical Mm -hmm. things or getting kids excited we need to get them excited with the word of god and realizing that with all the depression and suicide and pornography and all the temptations of social media and to be discouraged and compare their hope is in this right the word of god i think as a church we've gotten not us necessarily maybe we i mean we for sure fail all the Mm -hmm. time because we're people but but I think as as a church, like a body in Jesus, mm-hmm. you know, I feel like we've lost, we've started to lose that in like our in like our um our time and our generation, you know, like we're so focused on the lights and the music and the and, the, and just bumping out the, the, the noise, you know, we're we're so focused on that, and so we're almost like burying God's word in that. And so like the kids come for that, and they and if it's not there, then they don't even want to be there, you know. Mm-hmm. Like I'll wow. be honest, when I first got here, like the the worship is not as hype as mm-hmm. like as like you know other churches, and so the Lord really was like, what are you here for? Like, like what, it, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, dang, you're right. So it's like, mm-hmm. as a Where's church. The <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Where's the smoke? Where's the mist? Where's, Where's the, the lasers? <laughs> right. And so when it comes to like youth group and, and talking to these kids and like teaching these kids what the word says, like, it's so awesome. Like seeing them excited about this, you know yeah. what I mean? It's so, like yes. awesome. Like he was saying like, um, the sword drills and like hearing them, like some of them answer the questions and I'm like, oh my gosh, they've actually been reading their Bible. This is, beautiful Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. so it's just Mm -hmm. it's awesome yeah yeah it's so good and another thing of just talking about because a big thing we talk about with kids nowadays too is the same thing that at least with us three who are not married deal Mm -hmm. with is like singleness like these kids are so lonely nowadays but they think a boyfriend and girlfriend are going to satisfy them which right we've all had our experience with you know dating people and stuff like that but it just leaves you empty, yeah. right? If you don't have Christ and he's not, like you were saying, the seek first in the Matthew six thirty three. Mm. if he's not your everything and where it talks about yeah. delighting yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart, meaning he will direct you where you need to go, who the right person is, but you need to be, the world is like lustful over, yeah. you know, pornography or a person or a relationship or whatever Instagram is showing, but we need to be obsessed with Jesus yeah. and in love with him, right? Intimacy, gnoskos, knowing him like a man knows a, his wife. We need to know Jesus that way. And if we're living that life, think about how much excitement that can bring to kids mm-hmm. to show, look at my leaders. They're not married. Mm-hmm. They don't have a boyfriend or girlfriend, but they're excited for God. Mm. I should be excited for God. Excited. But if we're living our life depressed and Oh, well, we're not married yet, but one day we'll be like Morgan and Val. Like, no, we <laughs> right? need to be hyped Goals. and excited that, you know, I, the <laughs> fact that you said that, Ryan, and you're a man, but you said that Jesus is your husband, husband the I creator. I'm that. like, That's I want bad. guys to be <laughs> not in a gay way, but not that you were <laughs> thinking that, but it's not like <laughs> yeah, what the world is. says, but I yeah. want more guys to realize that yeah. because it's hard for guys to understand that as a church, we're the bride of Christ because you're a man, you know, but it's important even for men to know that okay the world's telling you you need a girlfriend or then they look at pornography or do these things to satisfy them but it all leaves them empty and feeling like junk right and we've all experienced the guilt and shame of sins in our past but Mm -hmm. what we can now tell these kids is do not do what we did like be on fire and obsessed with jesus he is Mm -hmm. the only way and so i just whatever you guys want to share about that what do you think specifically towards relationships right because all three of us are single not morgan he's with val and if you (laughs) haven't seen their love story i'll link that in the bio but it's so beautiful um but what would you guys say of how to be because the world tells you oh just be satisfied Mm -hmm. and then you'll be good but what does that look like for you like on a daily basis i guess i want to hear ryan's thoughts being satisfied in the world or being satisfied in god in the lord in the lord (laughs) <laughs> yeah well the world is always gonna f- leave you feeling empty and satan's always gonna keep accusing you and make you feel like a terrible person which, yeah. w- which we are set yeah. apart from <laughs> christ yeah mm-hmm. um but i think on a daily basis for the lord i like what somebody said the other day about giving it's it's the same thing about you know you're not your own you've been brought, r- bought with a price yep mm. That's talking about glor- glorifying God in your body. But like somebody said the other day, who went through COVID and then, but anyways, he got close with the Lord. Mm. He said, like, my very breath mm. is sustained in the Lord. Mm. Mm-hmm. So like, he's like, everything, 
he's like, I wish more people said this <laughs> because he's like, he's learning it. But when somebody asks him a question or to do something, he's like, uh, he feels like he should say, I got to check with my dad. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so just like yeah. that kind of walk where it's, uh, you know, and we're humans, so we fail, but walking by the spirit and complete surrender mm-hmm. is saying, I've tried to live my life mm-hmm. with, you know, my own self will and my pride and my sin. And yeah. it, uh, it only lead, ends in death and, and what's not optimal. So just mm-hmm. s- giving the Lord the first fruits of your day, mm-hmm. sitting down, setting a time aside specific time for him and just being still and listening. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amen. Good. So good. What about you, Drea? I really love that he said, my life is not my own. Like mm-hmm. that's, that's a, mm-hmm. uh, that's such a powerful like statement. I was reading, you guys had brought up um, a devotional. I forget the guy's name. Oswald Chambers. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I was reading, I think it was like the third of October. And um, it said it was talking about pouring out, like pouring, pouring out, pouring everything out to the Lord. Right. And it was mm. it brought up the example of d- when David was saying when David, um, I think his army was like um, bringing him water because um, he, hmm. he needed water. And David, um, David, it's in Second Samuel, I think. But David poured it out. He's like, I'm not going to drink this. I'm going to mm. pour it out to the Lord, even though he needed mm-hmm. it. He's like, I'm not going to drink. it. I'm yeah. giving it to the Lord. You know? mm. And I was thinking, it's like, crazy. our life is not our own. Right. And so uh, being single, like because. God put the desire in our hearts to be with someone, you know, like he put that Mm -hmm. desire in our hearts, but holding on, even like we can even idolize a desire, you know, we can even like Mm -hmm. put our whole lives in that, but even the desire is not our own because he put it in our hearts. You know what I mean? So are we willing to pour that out to the Lord, pour out what we want the most out to the Lord? And Oswald had said something like you can't set aside something for the Lord. That's meant that, that you've basically pictured to satisfy yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, everything like ours, like everything in us should be, toward satisfying God, you know? And I think that's like toward pleasing him. And I think that's the hardest thing because we're humans and I'm going to tell you that's a struggle. But I think like um, the one thing that that God's really been working on me the most like recently is to come to a place where I feel I can say, you know what, I may never get married. Or even I'll say to myself, Mm -hmm. I'll never get married just to see how I feel, you know? Mm -hmm. And if I Mm -hmm. I feel like attached, then I'm like, dang, my hand's like this and not like this. I should should open up my hand, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm like, yeah, I think that's. Am that's, I willing? Are we willing that's to pour what it Tim out? Tim Brown said, right? Yeah. Well, Wait, he, waiting. I'm, I'm, yes. Well, it's not. Yeah. His, yes. It's not yes. his. Yes. But like, waiting with an open hand, yeah. like yeah. God, what do you want? Yeah. And that is hard to say. Yeah. Like, God, do you want me to be single? Even mm-hmm. I know that's yeah. not an easy thing, and it's not a calling for a lot of people. I don't believe, and, but but we have to be open with yeah. that. Mm-hmm. And I think when we lay that down. So sometimes people are like, oh, I'll, yeah, I'll lay it down and then God will give me a, ah, a spouse. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, we think we can <laughs> we like can mess with God. What? Like we we think we can be <laughs> like, OK, been... I can do reverse right. psychology on like, God. It's like, it, like, no, it's easy. <laughs> but we really do have to have that heart to say, yeah. God, I, like why well, I tell people like and tell kids in youth groups, they're like, oh, I want to date. I want to get married so bad. But then it's like in heaven, we, we're not even going to yeah. be married, yeah. you know. Mm. We're going to be married to Jesus, right? Uh-huh. We're the bride of Christ. And so I think to to picture that and to say my life isn't supposed to just be for my spouse right. or to be looking for a spouse. I need to be serving God mm. now right. where I am and, yeah. and whatever situation I'm in. Because like I've only been married for a little over two years, but... If Vel, you know, went home to be with Jesus, like I, I, my life still has to go on. Right. I still have to continue to give my life to the mm-hmm. Lord. I can't be like, oh, my life's well, over. Is, yeah. You know, it needs to. So before marriage and even after marriage, like I just did a memorial service today of a lady who lost her husband. But it's like her life, she needs to keep going on. Yeah. You know, she needs to keep serving Jesus. She can't just say, well, my spiritual leader's gone. No, it's like <laughs> God's your all in all. Yeah. And mm-hmm. a spouse is just a cherry on top. So. Amen. And yeah. a way to mm-hmm. find if you are like wanting a godly spouse is to be serving. Like, yeah. Yeah. And to like, why would you want to be going to a bar or going on a dating app when it's like <laughs> you're just trying to find someone who's probably most likely lazy and a bum. But <laughs> if you're serving God with all your heart, the visual that everyone knows. And if you don't know, I'm telling you now. But 
is you like a race you're running as hard as you can to the finish line which is what Hmm. jesus Mm -hmm. in heaven one day with him eternity so you're running full force all out and then if with what you're doing and serving the lord you look to the side of you and that person is also doing that and you're like hey "Hey, they're (laughs) keeping up or we could do this forever and then you say hey you want to you want to serve together okay and that's the courting stage which everyone says you shouldn't ever want to date dating is the interview time but you know what? I don't really agree with that in the fact of if you're doing it the right way. That if you're doing it the right way of like in fellowship with other believers and yeah. like with your family, church family, it should be like what we're saying. You get to know them when you're serving, yeah. when you're when you're being able to do things in a group. Not saying you can, can never like have a time where, I mean, obviously you have to talk alone and be, right. but not put yourself in situations. We talked in another Some podcast. Can to, happen, yeah. yeah, something can happen or arousing love. But yeah, we got to get back but, to that where we have family and yeah, we have the church family. Yeah, that's where they mm-hmm. gain to know each other in in a group, you know, yeah. and, and people are like, "Oh, that's not cool. I just want to be, you know, I just want just me and her, you it's know." Not, but that's not very romantic. It's like, yeah, <laughs> but that's it's, what people say. Yeah, that's what people like say. Ryan, and <laughs> but I mean, that's what that's how Val and I did it. Yeah. We just we had yeah. the family, the church family. Mm-hmm. We were never alone with each other. Like we were alone with each other. Like maybe. At like a restaurant or something but like people could, like our family could see us still you know yeah so it's like and that sounds crazy for people uh, but we courted for a year you know and then we got married right. and everything by the grace of god has been good you know yeah. people think oh but you have to do this you gotta try this or that nope i mean no. we, by the we, grace of god it worked for us and yeah we've lost like the idea of what that romance is supposed to be like like it's not romantic but hmm. that's not supposed to be in it like in where you like we introduce romance so soon yeah. like nowadays like yeah. in, in well, relationships now we get to enjoy and, that in marriage exactly yeah. otherwise it's like mm. well otherwise it's your brother and sister that's how you have to look at it the podcast we're listening to yeah. with becoming something and this one lady she's 40 and she's not married and they were talking in the podcast they're like until you're engaged or really it's until you say do technically because Val was engaged before mm-hmm. she was with morgan they're your brother and sister, yeah, you're like and sibling. that's how you have to look at them yeah. because but they could think not. Think about be yours how weird that is. If, like, yeah, if you're going to church, you both love the church and the church family that you've grown up in, and you date, but yeah, say you mess something. around, you know, you sleep with you one know, another or something, be after it's over. and then well, you break up, and then you're like, leave. oh, I gotta leave the, ch-, you know, and, and it's not supposed to be like that. Right. We're yeah. not supposed to right. mess around that way. Mm-hmm. And because we don't know if it's actually going to lead to marriage, right. you know? the moment you the moment you know that like you start feeling it's going to be awkward once if you like you stop talking, then you know you probably crossed yep. the line. Yep. You know, yeah. you and should be you able to, to it, yeah, break up and then be cool, and then next Sunday sit side by side right. as friends. You know, <laughs> it's like, Amen. yeah. So, and I think it's also really good what just talking about relationships, and then we'll end it. But even when we look at our culture and the hookup realm and doing things like the i don't know just how we do things is so not the way that right. god intended it right there's not even dating in the no. bible but if people really do have a desire to be married i like how um pastor jonathan Policluta was saying too he's like tell people like tell your friends and family like you know what i really have a desire to get married and if they see someone else or have ideas like it <laughs> used to be the families yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and actually i was joking i don't know if i was joking with ryan or someone i was like would you trust me and i know people are like <laughs> no but i'm like you don't have to trust me i'm joking but that we have a church family where yeah. we're like hey we love you we're for you and if and not just because ooh, we love love, but we love it where it's true. Like God loves marriage yeah. and it is like two are better than one. Like in the fact of you can also in marriage, you can also when you have children raise up little warriors mm-hmm. for Christ That's to cool. disciple them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the key is too is to not just be finding people who's just like a random person that you're attracted right. to, but someone that your goals in life is like ministry. Right. Not that they're the exact same thing. But, that but they complement they each, other. Yeah. each other in line. Like if you have mm-hmm. one person who is like at church serving all the time, another person is like, I don't a even want to go to church. Yeah, so. Like that's not right. Or though he was saying one person is like, I want to be an accountant in Michigan. And the other person is like, well, I want to be a, a, a missionary in Peru. 
that might not, work, not work. You know, yeah. not that they're not two golly people. But someone's gonna have to lay down. Someone's the gonna yeah. have to switch there. Yeah. Which, yeah. But I, I think that I'm gonna read these two verses and then we can try to kind of wrap it up. But Romans twelve two says, "Do not be conformed." Um, sorry, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by the testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Mm -hmm. So, right, we're not going to try to fit in what the world's doing and how they do things to try to be trendy. Right. But what is it? It's the word of God. It's God's will that changes us, that right. transforms us. And it's because we're trying to do things that are good and acceptable, right? Not to like a future spouse or someone we're trying to attract, but to God, to him, right? to please him. And then this last one, because I know we're in the book of Daniel and yes. I love this mm. song, Another in the Fire, but it's Daniel 3.18. But even if he doesn't, right, yeah, save them out of fire, good. we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, we're talking to Nebi, King that Nebi. we will <laughs> never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you have set up. So yeah. that's how we need mm -hmm. to say is like, even mm -hmm. if you don't give me what I want, God, You're or even awesome. if you yeah. don't like, give well, we're me unworthy this thing. servants. We yeah. don't even well, <laughs> deserve it. Right. Be, be asking for anything anyway. Yeah. But yeah. even if you don't get even the position you want at church, maybe you're serving at a church where you are and you're like, I want to do this. I'm telling you the people who are serving behind the scenes that no one sees, like me and Morgan are on stage and doing the podcast all the time. We'll probably get less rewards than someone who is just, cleaning the bathroom between services you know what i mean yeah and yeah. that's how we need to look at it is those who are least here it says will be greatest in yeah. heaven and that's, that's the it's best. just crazy that's the best. Mm -hmm. but it's so cool how god's ways are not our ways like yeah. the bible says mm -hmm. and Praise God, i don't right. know i'm just so thankful for our church family and just mm -hmm. being able to have this community right yeah, what it wasn't so an excited. axe they fellowshiped they read the word together and Bro that fellowship we're good at we're good at, that. Yeah, we're we good do at break bread every day all day yeah. <laughs> that's what we do but <laughs> i encourage you guys wherever you are if you're like in a community of people like that you can be in a community but you just don't want it because maybe you're shy or whatever to go into a community of like a church because that's so important you we need each other and if you don't have one and you're looking for a church and you want to visit us you guys can do that more than welcome to do mm -hmm. that here Where at Calvary Valley. Uh, there you go. Calvary Valley Church, 1691 North Lock Canyon so cool. Drive. 85704. <laughs> but we we'd love to have you part of our family oh, and man. part of Turning Point Faith, what this are which explaining all of this to say, Turning Point Faith is like the new ministry for like our young adults. Yeah. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be going to Gospel Rescue Mission and making meals for them, right? We're going to be um Alex, she does this thing with, um, I forgot what the place was called, but doing a diaper drive where we just donate di diapers, doing the 40 Days for Life. Um, Ryan's part of like the pro-love thing, getting people more involved with doing sidewalk ministry, um, hmm. being able to even just go to the school boards and things like that where we just are praying for the people who are talking. Yeah. Yeah. That's the mm -hmm. things that are going up and that they're doing the mask mandates or making it where even Jesus, you can't pray now in schools or read your Bible, like just things like that, that we are praying that we're doing going to also with Turning Point Fight do worship nights at the park and then do the voter registration and the tabling for Turning Point um, so that we can invite people to church, so we can mm -hmm. pray for them, do ministry. And also the cool thing is the young adults we're going to be doing and just different people, um, we're going to also have like prayer ministry more after church. So just if anyone needs prayer ministry or deliverance or anything, we would love to pray for um, people mm -hmm. and and it doesn't just have to be young adults uh, associated with right. Turning Point mm -hmm. Faith. No. So anyone because can. If you're watching, you you're can like, be hey, 95. I'm not a young adult. Bio, but, right, yeah, let's go. You guys can join. So yeah, yeah. amen. We're just saying it's for young adults because we have more time than most people, True. and we can be easily be very selfish. So young adults have no excuse. But <laughs> even better, if you're mm -hmm. a mom, if you're a grandma, we would love for you guys to join us mm -hmm. and be part of Turning Point Faith. You guys can reach out to me. You can email me at calvaryov at calvaryov.org. Um, you also could just come to church and talk to me, the girl with the mm -hmm. long hair. And <laughs> Ryan doesn't have long hair anymore, but he did. <laughs> you can no. talk to any of these people because now they're too. people. I know. One time. Dre did too. Yep. We all have long hair. Well, but <laughs> I just... Yeah, I'm just thankful for you guys mm -hmm. and all that you do. But do you have any closing I'm thoughts? Too. 
for Amen. you guys. Any closing thoughts or anything you would like to share with the listeners or your church family? Because that's who everyone should be mm-hmm. listening. You got thoughts, Mary? Yeah, I was just gonna say I would. I wanted to like exhort and encourage and and uh, mm-hmm. people with what the Lord has been encouraging and exhorting, and challenging me with, mm-hmm. and also through other people in the church, which is. Um, just to, hmm, I think similar to, there's a false dichotomy, I think, in our culture, it goes along with like, oh, don't talk about, at the dinner table, don't talk about God and politics, Mm. and I think this, our American culture, or Western civilization is kind of separated, you know, God and science. Mm. When in reality, like mm-hmm. science worships God, just like everything mm-hmm. else. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> yeah. But uh, also with with politics, like or just the political sphere, um, there's a couple of things that come up f- that he's been coming up for me, which is um, that we're called as Christians to stand in the gap yeah. for mm-hmm. those who can't defend themselves mm-hmm. for the cause of the uh, widows and the fatherless. Mm-hmm. Um, a city on a hill. Uh, we're not to be a lamp that's put under a lampstand, mm-hmm. but on the stand, mm-hmm. salt of the earth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, all of these things, wherever the spirit's leading you, whether it's at a you know private family dinner mm-hmm. yeah. with people who don't believe, uh, or going to the school board, mm-hmm. um, like some people at church have been doing, mm-hmm. it's been mm-hmm. really encouraging. I just encourage you to to uh, draw near to the Lord and rely on him for the mm-hmm. strength to do that. Cause I uh, terrifies me as well. But <laughs> I think as things get crazier, whether or not the Lord's returning in this season or not, mm-hmm. uh, the world's going to keep getting darker, yeah. which may be scary, but we don't have to be scared as yeah. Christians. Mm-hmm. And not only that, but also, uh, I think the harvest is, uh, the Lord of the harvest is looking at the harvest and it's, plentiful and light shines the mm-hmm. brightest in, in a dark world so mm. um just be the salt and light the and uh yeah that's Amen. Good. Mm. and when you talked about the harvest i was thinking how the harvest is great yep. but the yeah. workers right. are few yeah. mm. and we see that even at so, church you know yeah. with volunteers it's like we we have young adults mm-hmm. and stuff but then we still, as the church grows, it's like we still need more, more, more yeah. people to yeah, serving at church to too. harvest, yeah. you know, uh, and to disciple and yes. to love and to serve. Mm. And I think, yeah, we need to really come to church saying, not what can I take from this church, mm. like Pastor Craig taught yeah. uh, with the ten two ministry, Luke ten two, but what and Matthew nine thirty seven, Matthew nine thirty seven, yeah, but what we can give, give you know, yeah. it's. It's not for us. It's not mm. just for right. to have a cool place to free hang lunch. out. It's for God right. too. So even the yeah. lunch is not free. We pay for our own lunch. So. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Harvest yeah. Festival bring true. bring You're a right. side dish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bring yeah. a side dish. Okay. What about you and Jay? Any closing thoughts? Um, yeah, mine's more toward the unbelie- the, the like the non-believer though. Like I think, mm. um, it's so easy to well two things. It's so easy to get wrapped up in like the world and wrapped mm-hmm. up in like. Um, your desires and like all the things that are, that are out here, but I think we all can like attest to this. I mean, well, if you weren't, you, I, I mean, you guys were raised in the church, and I was too, kind of, but I, I did kind of stray off. And I think I, I know a little bit about yours, your testimony too. But I think we can often get so wrapped up in all that, but we come to notice that that joy is like that that joy that happiness is fleeting. You know, mm-hmm. it, like it, mm-hmm. it lasts for like a second, and then you still feel empty and kind of feel lost you know Mm -hmm. um so i just want to encourage like those who may be listening who don't know the lord maybe who don't yeah they they, maybe they attest to like i mean they ascribe to like new age or something else that that seems to give you experience like like if you Mm -hmm. want you're looking for experiences and stuff um or whatever that looks like i think the first thing is maybe like sit and think for a second and, and, and 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 feel how and notice how your happiness doesn't last you know and 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 I want to encourage you to, to, to look at Jesus, like to, to mm-hmm. turn away from that and, and, and yeah, chase yeah. after Jesus because he's the one thing, like literally the one thing that never changes and that never 
goes away. Like when you accept Christ, like your joy will never go away. Mm -hmm. And the second mm -hmm. thing I was going to say is um, for, for those who don't, um, those who may look at church and look at people who know a lot of scripture or look at like no maybe you have a lot of questions and you're intimidated by like being around people who you feel know more than you when it comes to God, like, you know, um, mm. and that may be keeping you from going to church. I want to encourage you also to like put aside those thoughts. Cause mm. that's like mm. the enemy trying to keep you from coming. He's trying yeah. to keep you from coming in. He's trying to hold you down and keep you out, you know? So I want to encourage you if you're thinking like you're intimidated, you're thinking that if you come, you'll be this person like this big and everyone else is like this, you know, drop that. And, and and come like whether yeah. that's here yeah. or whether that, whatever, wherever that is if, if when it's teaching about jesus like wherever that is go and you'll notice mm -hmm. like god doesn't look at our like our our stature in our mind like like he doesn't look at our, our education doesn't look at any of that and often he the bible actually says he uses like one of the small and insignificant mm -hmm. things yeah for you know great things so yeah. mm -hmm. drop those thoughts and and, and come mm -hmm. if that's what's keeping you back so mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Good word. wow mm -hmm. that was good i'll yeah. preach even though we don't believe in one pastors yeah <laughs> Sorry, Jaya. Right. This is your only spot that you get. <laughs> so much time. Me too. No, but yeah, I'm thankful for you guys. Yeah, I said it guys. so many times, but it's so true. Mm -hmm. And knowing mm -hmm. that God will reward you in heaven. Yeah. Because we're not paying you for this podcast. Sorry. Nope. <laughs> Wasted my nonsense. Get you a water <laughs> bottle. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, I'm going to give some announcements, but we have our. Um, harvest festival coming up yes. october 31st so everyone come to that hmm. um we just did a video last or this past wednesday and then we have videos with steve mancar's why we don't celebrate halloween but hmm. make sure to check that video i'll put that in the description below and also that will be october 31st which is a sunday at 6 p.m bring a side dish to share and a bag of candy we'll actually by the time no it will be this coming Sunday. will be the Harvest Festival. So invite your friends, family members, horseback riding. Is it? Yeah, because it'll be 20th. on Tuesday. This podcast will be on. Oh. Yeah. So yeah. make sure you that gave it you away, guys. Andrea. Andrea. <laughs> make sure that you guys come to that. There will be horseback riding. There will be obstacle course. There will be um, fire with s'mores and all and that Ryan. stuff. So come yes, Ryan, Ryan will be there. Be there. <laughs> will you be there? Just yeah, I'll be there. <laughs> oh wow! Sorry, Let me dick. show up. That was a little. Will low. you show up? I'll be on his phone. Yeah. No, Ryan's a hard worker. We like to make fun of him, but Excuse Ryan. <laughs> Ryan's a hard worker. We're thankful for him, and he's not. He doesn't look enough comfortable enough in this podcast. Right. He could right. just a little more. <laughs> but uh, no, I think we need someone to give a hard time. We, we do. do. So you Ryan's me in the hot seat. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> that's you sometimes it's nj yeah. yeah but today it's ryan but i also <laughs> come to um november 14th brian sumner's coming so that's a sunday come to the 9 a.m and 11 a.m um and also a special 6 p.m where he's talking about courting being single engaged marriage and his testimony with that's even divorce cool. so come to that he'll be selling his books and some skateboards and things like that so come to that and the day after we're going to at the u of a for the turning point faith we're going to um the u of a for charlie kirk event mm -hmm. and we'll be serving at that so you guys make sure to register i'll put the link below where you guys can register it's first come first serve but it's free it's free. Yeah, it's free. Mm -hmm. and then also the america fest is on december 18th i registered it was 55 dollars, but it's a four-day event except we're not missing sunday but we'll all drive and come to that so it's like all these amazing speakers in the conservative movement, politicians, all these people, um, also musicians, I already said that, I think, I don't know, comedians. So that will mm -hmm. be an awesome event that we'll all be going to. And then stay tuned. We'll have a meeting every single month for Turning Point Faith. Make sure to come to me or email me if you want to be a part of that. And I think that's it. But... Mm -hmm. I'm thankful. I've said it like 25 times. And Thanksgiving's so coming up next Thanksgiving's month. Thanksgiving's coming up. <laughs> so, yeah, but we're going to have to do more of these real uh, talks. Because yeah. yeah. we didn't no. even plan. Literally. Yes. Nothing Praise really, but it was Lord. so good. And God is good. And if you haven't already, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. But if you would like to listen to us wherever you get your podcast, just type in Calvary Conversations, whether that's iTunes or Spotify. But on iTunes, iTunes? Yes, iTunes. <laughs> Make sure you guys also leave us a five-star review. No one's really done that. So, Do Drea, it. 
Ryan. I'm gonna do it now. Do that now. <laughs> um, and also, you can follow us on Instagram at Calvary Conversations, and also you can follow us on Instagram at Turning Point Faith Calvary to see all the behind the scenes and get all the updates with the events coming up. Thank you also to our sponsors, Mission Heating and Cooling. You guys are awesome. Ooh. We're so thankful for you guys. And if it's getting a little colder, a little chilly, but it's also still hot. So if you need AC or heating, <laughs> they will do that for you. Their link is in the description below. And I think that's it. Thanks, Drea. Thanks, Ryan. And we'll Thank have you, you again soon. Love you guys and God bless. See you.